Number one says which statement is not true for the function f of theta equals sine of theta for the values of theta between 0 and 2 pi. So I'm just going to draw out the unit circle, just a quick sketch of our unit circle here. Um, and I'm going to draw on just these quadrantal points that we can look at. And so this point is the point 1, 0. This is the point 0, 1 negative one, zero, and um, zero, negative one, remembering that the sign on the unit circle is the y value. So the ones we're looking at for um, sign here are these y values, zero, one, zero, negative one, and then obviously the numbers in between for each of those. One other thing about the unit circle, um, we'd wanna think about theta. So at this point, theta is zero. Okay, right here, this is the angle theta equals um, pi over 2. Here is theta equals pi radians. And then here, theta equals 3 pi over 2 radians. Then we can also look at this um, as a graph of sine. So we could look at it here. So sine at 0 is 0. Pi over 2, it's at 1. Pi, it's at 0. 3 pi over 2, it's at negative 1, and then 2 pi, it's back to 0, and then we can connect that with a curve. So that's what one cycle or one period of the sine function looks like. So the outputs of the function range from negative 1 to 1. That's true. So sine is between negative 1 and 1, and we are looking for the not true one. Um, sine of theta is 1 only when theta equals pi over 2. And so here's the value where sine is 1, and that is at pi over 2, and that is the only time that happens from 0 to pi. So this one um, is true. C, um, theta equals, uh, sine of theta equals 0 only when theta is 0. So sine of 0 is 0, that's very true. But sine of pi is also 0, and sine of 2 pi is also 0. So this is not the only time when this happens. This also happens at theta equals um, pi and 2 pi. And I'm not sure. I think I said pi for this one, but this is pi. And then, whoops, so that one was not true. That's the one we want. We wanted to circle this one. So this one was false, and that's the one we're looking for. And then part D says that sine um, is greater than zero whoops, for the angle zero to pi. So from zero to pi, the function is greater than zero, and that's true. All right, number two, angle theta measured in radians satisfies this equation that cosine of theta equals zero. What could the values of theta be? Select all that apply. So let's take a look again at that unit circle. Now cosine is our x values this time. So we're looking for when our x values are 0. And so this is 1, 0. So that's cosine is 1. This one is 0, 1. Okay, so at pi over 2, cosine is 0. And then this one is negative 1, 0. And then this one is 0, negative 1. So the cosine at 3 pi over 2 would also be 0. And those are the only two places that that happens. Otherwise, you have some x value at all these other angles that is not 0. Number three here are the graphs of two functions. Which one is the graph of cosine of theta? And explain how you know. So if we take a look here, which one is cosine? is going to be this green one or graph number two. Maybe I'll change that to green since it's the green graph. Okay, so graph number two, and there's multiple ways you could say this um, because cosine of zero equals one. So we know that on the unit circle, cosine of zero equals one. So if you just took a look at drawing the unit circle, Here's zero for a theta, and this is the point one zero, cosine being the x. So cosine of zero is one. So this green graph needs to be the graph of cosine. So then um, which one is the graph of sine? 
and that would be graph number one. And similarly, because sine of zero equals zero. So at the, on this unit circle, again, sine is the y value. So at zero, um, cosine is zero, and we see that point right here. Number four, which statements are true for both functions of cosine and sine? Select all that apply. So it needs to be true for both. So true for both. So the function is periodic. Yes, that's true for both. The maximum value is one. Yes. So in here, cosine starts at its maximum value. Sine gets to it right here, but they both have a max at one. So this is true. The maximum value occurs at theta equals zero. Well, that happens for cosine at theta equals zero, which is right here on the y-axis. Cosine is at its max, but sine is not. So this is only true for cosine. The period of the function is two pi, yes, for both of them. The function has a value of 0.71 at pi over four. So this is true for both of them. So at pi over four, so here's pi over four, both functions are at 0.71. So this is true. Are both functions 0.71 at 3 pi over 4? So at 3 pi over 4, um, sine is 0.71, but cosine is negative 0.71. So this is false. So um, cosine of 3 pi over 4 equals negative 0.71. Number five, here's the graph of a function f. The function is either defined by cosine squared plus sine squared or cosine squared minus sine squared. Which one is correct? So there's a lot of different ways that you could explain this, but we know that cosine squared um, plus sine squared equals one. So we learned that. So that would be a constant function. So cosine squared plus sine squared would look like this. So this would be the cosine squared plus sine squared graph. It would just be a straight line at one. And so that's not our function here. So we know that it has to be the other option since they only gave us two options. So that's one way you could explain it, okay? That you know that sine squared plus cosine squared always has to equal one. Another way you could explain it is like if you look at an angle. So um, you could say you could say cosine squared plus um, sine squared always has to whoops, always has to be positive, and this graph has negative numbers or negative outputs. Okay, so that's another reason it could not be sine squared plus cosine squared. Okay, because we know that sine, that cosine squared is always positive, sine squared is always positive, because anytime you square a number, it's always positive. So you wouldn't be able to get any negative outputs without subtracting. Another um, thing you could do is you could just take a specific value like pi over four, and you could say, well, you know, sine of pi over four equals 0.71, cosine of pi over four equals 0.71. So if you did, you if you did 0.71, whoops, 0.71 squared minus 0.71 squared, that would equal zero, which is where this output is. If you were to add these, it would end up at one, which would not be the graph. So definitely um, cosine squared minus sine squared. Number six, the minute hand on the clock is 1.5 feet long. The end of the minute hand is six feet above ground one time per hour. How many feet above ground could the center of the clock be? So let's draw our clock and we've got this center here. So now the points, where are the points on this clock that only happen once per hour? And that's gonna be the top point and the bottom point. Any other point happens two times an hour. Like this one would happen here and here or this one would happen here and here, or this one would happen here and here. 
So the only ones that happen once per hour is straight up at the top of the hour. That's why they call it the top of the hour, right? And then here at halfway through the hour. So if this point right here is at six feet and the minute hand is one and a half feet long, then this one would have to be 4.5 feet, which is six minus one and a half. So it could be at four and a half. The other option, okay, so the other option is that um, it's at this bottom point. So this bottom point right here is six feet. And if that's the case, then we'd be a foot and a half above this for the center. So six plus one and a half would give you 7.5 feet. So those are the only two options there. Number seven, here's the graph of the water level height, which they're calling H in feet relative to a fixed mark and then measured at a beach over several days. So this is the day, so one day, two days, and this is the height of the water. So explain why the water level is a function of time. And this is because for every time um, measurement, so for every time mark, there is a specific water height. So if I ask you any time of day, you can go to it and you can see where the water was. Versus if you go to the water height, that happens multiple times throughout the different days. So describe how the water level varies each day. And the water level varies each day. Um, and so we're looking at, you know, this part of the graph kind of. So you're doing, what's it doing in one day? So what's it doing here? It's going down and then back up. So you kind of start at a high point. It goes down to this low point, then back up to a high point, then back down to a low point and back up. And when we're talking water, um, this is talking tides. That's what they call it for water. So um, the water is going to two high points called high tide and two low points, low tide per day. We're basically going through its cycle twice um, each day. So what does this mean in context of the water level for a period periodic function. So why is it periodic? Well, it goes from high um, to low and back to high twice each day. So it's following a cycle or a pattern. So it's following a cycle. It goes high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. So it's following that pattern. So that means that it is a periodic function.